So welcome to Radio Sherwood, welcome here. And um, I will start with the interview with uh, the song you released uh, a few days ago that was, that's called uh, Permanently Fucked. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, that was recorded during the session of your last album, Homicidal Ecstasy. Um, you talked about this song as a, uh, a drastically blown out of a proportion way of showing how much you love someone. Um, I would like to know uh, how, what, what's the meaning of this song because it's uh, really uh, it doesn't happen happen the very often to talk about love in that matter. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So the song is uh, loosely based on a horror film from 2018 uh, called Pet, and uh, Dominic Hannigan from Lord of the Rings. He uh, He plays this dog catcher who falls in love with a barista and she's a serial killer. So instead of uh, letting her like go about her diets killing people, he volunteers as like a vice uh, to be tortured and humiliated so she doesn't risk like being imprisoned. And uh, like he loves her so much that he's willing to sacrifice himself just so she doesn't go spend the rest of her life in prison. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as like uh, our music goes, even though it's very gory, uh, violent, you know, with the imagery, um, we do have a lot of songs about showcasing love. Um, you know, for, for instance, like our, our last uh, full-length record, we have a song about a man uh, coming back to life as a zombie and uh, rekindling his love with his widowed wife and they lit and then she becomes a zombie in the process and they live happily ever after. Uh, you know, I also have a song about um, losing the, the woman that raised me and um, processing grief and mourning that loss. So, you know, we like to touch um, tender subjects um, rather than it just being violent ooga booga music all the time you know so can we please talk about like uh, uh, testicular rot or black market vasectomy yeah yeah how uh, the hell you came up uh, with something like that <laughs> um you know uh, testicular rot was actually that 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 song that's about the the zombie that finds his uh widowed wife and his His uh, zombified sperm ends up turning her into a uh, zombie. I don't know, man. I don't. I don't. I don't know where I get the inspiration. I think I'm just so um, slapstick, funny, you know, and just a weird like individual altogether. Like you know, I like a lot of horror movies. I like a lot of comedy movies, and um, you know, it's a lot of the stuff that I follow. So I try to be not as serious and just as different you know i i feel like if you take that kind of subject sort of seriously then something's really wrong with you other than just kind of poking fun or making a joke out of it um and then as far as like black market vasectomy it's like i'm actually t I, i've been uh talking to like three do different doctors so i can receive my own vasectomy And um, it was just like a joke, like, hell, hell, I'm just gonna buy a surgical kit from the black market and do it myself and uh, save, save, you know, $1,000. Um, so I think it just kind of stemmed from that. So, you know, like uh, conception, contraception, I mean, you know, in the United States, um, a lot of people frown upon it. A lot of people frown upon like abortion as well. and. I was just like, man, let's just make it easy. Let's just give everybody a vasectomy that doesn't want to have a kid. I don't want to have a kid. So, you know, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to do my part and then realizing how much money I have to save up for it. And I was just like, just give me a knife and uh, a bottle of alcohol. I'll just do it myself. Yeah. Uh, I like your sarcasm. <laughs> and uh, I think it's important uh, in a genre like this, uh, like you said, in horror movies, there is always uh, something like that that can uh, uh, reinvigorate the, the genre and, yeah. the, uh, and the music that you do. But uh, using this kind of subject, uh, have you ever uh, uh, experienced some kind of uh, censorship? 
with your uh, yeah yeah lyrics yeah yeah quite a bit um you know um as far as like imagery wise like you know music videos and stuff like they'll get flagged for uh being inappropriate or um they'll be like restricted uh with when it comes to viewing and that's totally understandable i have uh I have no, I have no problem with you know like just certain people shouldn't see that stuff you know I don't want kids seeing it I don't want kids following that kind of thing but um you know as far as like its intention it's not intended to really offend or hurt anybody by any means um, it's just more so us like this is our freedom of expression this is our art you know we like to be as gross as possible as heavy as possible. And also just have fun, you know, 100% while doing it. And um, so, you know, if, if people were to, like, protest it or try to shut it down, then I'd probably raise a stink about it. But as far as, like, hey, like, we don't want this being shown. We don't want kids finding this or whatever. I'm like, yeah, I totally back that. So... Okay, um, you and your band are often uh, referred as uh, part of a new wave of, the, of uh, death metal, uh, together with uh, bands such as uh, 200 Stab Wound and uh, Frozen Soul. Do you think that such a new wave, such a movement, such a scene uh, really exists or is just uh, a journalistic cliche? And also, I would like to ask you how much difficult it is to uh, create something new, uh, for example, in death metal, uh, um, when compared uh, uh, to bands, such, mm, great bands such as Death or Cannibal Corpse, uh, that maybe in the early days uh, it seems like they have said it all and there is nothing left to say in the genre. And so, how much difficult it is to create something that it is, re it is uh, really new uh, in, a, in a genre that uh, as, ma as the metal and uh, as death metal, it's always in between. Uh, uh, it's like uh, uh, if you are not, uh, uh, if you are a poser, if you are not uh, um, uh, in, if you doesn't follow, you know, the the great band uh, of the genre, and uh, if uh, but uh, uh, if you don't don't do something new, uh, it's like uh, you're a copycat of the great uh, band of the early days. Right. Um, you know, yeah, a lot of people like to refer. Um, this movement in death metal right now as sort of a revival. I, I personally, you know, like to think that it never died or faded away. You know, I, I've personally, me, I've been into death metal since I was a young kid. You know, I had friends, um, even my dad, you know, was listening to heavy music a lot around me growing up. Um, you know, I remember being 14 years old, being with my friend Ricky and Justin, who I'm still friends with today. Uh, we went to go see uh, Cannibal Corpse and Lamb of God together. Um, went to a couple different concerts. So I think this, uh, there, there's two sides of this new wave. You know, there's people that are creating new death metal that have always listened to it. And then there's people that are just getting into it and they're like, hey, I want to be in a band like that. And they start from there. Um, us, on one end, you know, we're, um, everyone in the band has been fans of the music for a long time. Like, I've been playing in death metal bands since I was 17, so since I was a kid in high school. Um, you know, as far as like other bands and stuff, they kind of like saw this wave, saw this trend and decided to like hop onto it. Um, but you know, like, uh, you know, for example, like the 200 Stab Wounds guys, I've, I've known them because they're, they're from our area too in Ohio. Um, I've known them for years and, you know, they, they used to play in a bunch of thrash bands, a bunch of crossover bands, like... Wasted Blood, uh, Subtype Zero, Cringe, and then they started 200 Stab Wounds and more death metal, more in your face. And I love it. I love it. I love that um, the scene, the popularity is growing. It's becoming more wildly available and people can consume it a lot easier now, you know, with the helps of the internet and stuff like that. It's also helping those legacy bands like Suffocation, Dying Fetus, Cannibal Corpse, and so forth um, grow and make more of a living playing music, which is good because that's going to make them want to write more music. It's what's going to make them want to travel more and play more shows. And um, yeah, I, I for one love that. But, you know, I, um, 
I'm more into a uh, particular side of death metal. Um, mostly like 90s to early 2000s, like brutal death metal and a lot of the East Coast stuff, like New York stuff, like Suffocation's my favorite band of all time. Um, Dehumanized, Dying Fetus, Pyrexia, and so forth. But yeah, I think, uh, you know, what, what people are doing, you know, there are bands that are creating something different, and then there's bands that are just taking from the book that the legendary bands started writing first. And either way, either way you describe it, I like all of it. So, you know, I don't, I don't oppose one side or the other, but um, I always listen to the bands that I've always been listening to. So, you know, the old school bands like Cannibal Corpse, Suffocation, Morbid Angel, and, and so forth. Okay, thank you very much, Edward. It was a really interesting uh, conversation, and Absolutely. we can't wait to see you on stage uh, tonight. Sounds good. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah.